5.0 Lollipop is one of the biggest updates to Android ever. In fact, I'd say it's the biggest. But just because it's different doesn't mean it's better. So are all the new features in this update actually worthwhile, or are they just changed for the sake of it? First of all, the thing you'll notice as soon as you start using a device with Android 5.0 on it is that the design is completely different. Then once you've been using it for a little bit longer, you'll probably start to really enjoy using the new design. And a little bit later than that, you then realise just how well thought through this design is compared to Android 4.4 KitKat or any previous version of Android really. Think of whatever's on your screen with Android 5.0 as a piece of paper. Some things are behind it and some are in front of the main layer. There are animations when things happen all over the system to show the user where that specific UI element is coming from. It reminds you that what you're doing isn't just coming from nowhere, it's coming in from a certain side of the screen and it's now either on top of everything else or you've pushed it away to the side or behind it. This is called material design, and personally, I really like it. Android has been due for a design refresh for ages now, and with material design, it finally gets it, and a good one too. Material design also brings a lighter look to Android too. Gone are the days of Holo with a lot of dark interfaces across the system, like in the settings app. We now have nice, bright, colourful interfaces, which I personally much prefer because I had no idea why Android used to be all dark and gloomy, so I'm glad that's changed now, and I can't wait for developers to update their apps. And that's probably one of the biggest problems Lollipop will face over the next few weeks when it's going to be rolling out to the most popular devices, the rate at which third-party apps will be updated to suit the new design. Like always, a new version of Android brings a new set of wallpapers with Lollipop, and as you'd expect, they're very nice and material design-like. If you want to get your hands on these new wallpapers and you aren't on Android 5.0 yet, check out the link in the description. Notifications also have a massive overhaul in Android 5.0, they're now visible on the lock screen, just like iOS, and if you get a notification, it will appear below the time on the lock screen, and you can double tap that notification to open it, or swipe it to the left or right to dismiss it. Of course, they will also dismiss it from the notification area as well, but the notification area is also redesigned. With one swipe down from the top, you see your notifications, obviously, but at the top is a little grey bar that tells you the time, date, Wi-Fi and mobile service signal strip, the amount of battery you have left in a small icon, with a second swipe down you get your brand new quick settings. When accessing the quick settings, there's another animation that goes on to reveal more information about your system, such as your battery percentage. In terms of the actual quick settings though, we have mostly the same options, but they're now all toggles instead of shortcuts. These new quick settings make certain things way easier to access now. We finally have an orientation lock toggle. Why this wasn't there in the first place, I'll never know, but it's nice to see it here now. And we also have a new flash lock toggle and the brightness is a little bit easier to change now too. The last option in here allows us to cast our screen to a Chromecast, which again is easier to access than before. Apart from that though, everything else in the notification area is pretty self-explanatory or just the same as in previous versions of Android. Notifications aren't the only new thing on the lock screen though. We also now have Smart Log, which makes it easier for you to get into your phone, but still keeps it secure enough so that others can't access it. Smart Lock is a feature that has two other features built into it, Trusted Devices and Trusted Face. Trusted Devices allows you to have your phone not ask you for your pattern or PIN if a Bluetooth or NFC device that's set up as a trusted device is connected to your phone. For example, if you're wearing your smartwatch and it's connected via Bluetooth to your phone, it knows that because the smartwatch is in range of the phone, it's going to be you unlocking your phone so it doesn't ask you for your pattern or PIN. Trusted Face is a revamped version of Face Unlock in previous versions of Android and it works much faster. But the main thing here is it works by scanning your face while you're looking at your notifications on the lock screen before you swipe to access your phone. If it recognises you before you swipe up, it will let you into your phone without asking for a pattern or pin because it's already authenticated you. If it hasn't recognised you yet, either because you swiped up too quick or there is poor lighting where you are, it will resort back to the usual pattern or pin you have. I really like this feature and it allows Android to compete with Touch ID on the latest iPhones via just a software feature rather than a hardware feature. In Android 5.0 you can now create multiple user accounts on phones as well as tablets. It's nowhere near as useful as it is on tablets but it's still here and the best part of this feature is a guest mode that automatically resets everything in it when you use it again. This is nice because one person can do something in the guest mode and if another person wants to do anything in it a few days after, you can put it straight back into the guest mode and they can start on a clean slate with all their things. You can now silence all notifications or silence most of them but still hear ones that are important. You have the priority and none mode 
And the cool thing about priority mode is that you can actually change yourself what notifications get through to you. These modes can be set indefinitely or for a certain amount of hours. Quiet hours can also be set, which is simply a time bracket where you have either priority or none mode on. We've had do not disturb and a quiet hour system like this since iOS 6 over on the Apple side, but it's nice to see this feature make its way over to Android. It's not only redesigned so you can browse through all your current apps in a Google Now like card design, which is very nice, but it now also includes your Chrome tabs in the multitasking interface, rather than having a separate screen to browse through them within Chrome itself. I quite like this because it makes mobile web apps seem more like native apps because they have their own spaces in the app switcher. But of course you can disable this functionality and browse through Chrome tabs separately if you wish. Also multitasking is screen pinning, which allows you to lock your phone into just one app that you can't get out of unless you press the backhand recents button on the navbar at the same time. The problem with this though is that Android does actually tell you how to leave this mode when you tap the home button, so I don't know what that's about, and it doesn't give you an option to require a password to get out of it either. If this wasn't the case, it would be a really nice feature, so I don't know why Android actually tells you how to get out of it, because I thought the whole idea of it was to lock the device in just one app. And there's also a new battery saver mode in Android 5.0 as part of Project Volta, which I have to admit I did almost forget about because it's not actually that good, but it promises to reduce the performance of your device and the amount of background data it's using to preserve every last bit of battery life. Android prompts you to turn this battery saver mode on when your device reaches 15%, and when you do enable it, your navbar and status bar turn bright orange to remind you that you have got this mode on. But as I said, this didn't work too well for me, although I am on a Nexus 4, so newer devices may benefit more from this feature. Under the hood, there are also some changes in Android 5.0. Android runtime is now the default runtime of 5.0, unlike earlier versions of Android where Dalvit was the default runtime, this new runtime will allow apps to launch faster without developers even having to optimise their apps in some cases. 64-bit support is also present in Lollipop, just to name two new developer features in this release. Android 5.0 is basically like what iOS 7 and iOS 8 combined were to iOS 6, but Google have brought both the visual redesign and more features to the operating system in one gigantic major update. It's just a shame it might not ever get to some phones so that were the best you could get just a year or two ago.